In today's video, we're going to finish our personal portfolio website in Webflow and host it with Hostinger. If you missed the last video, we created the desktop version of the site in Webflow. I'll link that on the screen now so you can get caught up. Today, we're going to make sure this design looks good when it's on different scale devices. So we're going to set up the responsiveness of the site and we'll launch the site by hosting it with Hostinger. So I hope you guys are ready to finish off this three part video series sponsored by Hostinger. Hostinger is an affordable web hosting provider. With Hostinger, it's super easy to set up your website. You can either migrate an existing one or import your website, which we'll be doing later on in this video even. They even have their own H panel, which is their take on the C panel, but they've made it a lot more user friendly and simplified it to make the web hosting process a lot easier. So make sure you use the link in the description, hostinger.com slash Kaler to start hosting your websites with Hostinger. And at checkout, make sure you use coupon code Kaler to get an additional 7% off your order. All right, so to make this thing responsive, let's go ahead and do the bigger changes first. So let's go to the tablet version. And on the tablet version, I'm gonna shrink everything just a little bit. So I'm gonna grab our logo and we're gonna go down to 18 for our logo. So dropping that down. And then I want my text to go from a base of 18 down to 14. And the line height is gonna be 21. And we don't need the padding to be so large between these. So we'll drop that down to 20 as well. Also, let's grab a section. So we wanna make sure we just have the section selected. And we're gonna remove the padding of 40. And I'm holding Shift and Alt and dragging to 20 just to give us more room on the screen to work with. And so what I want to do here is I'm actually going to grab the paragraph text and I'm just actually going to hide this on tablet. And then I'm going to grab the web designer text, set it to manual, and I'm going to drag it to full width. And I'm going to make sure that it is set to the center now. Moving on down for the H2 heading, we're going to scale this down quite a bit. Let's try 44 and then 44 times 1.5 for the line height, which gives us 66. And then I'm going to adjust the width and I'm gonna set it to 100%. And it's at this point, I'd no longer want this section to be full viewport height. So I'll grab the parent of that. And instead of 100 viewport, we'll set it to 600 pixels. And we need to adjust the minimum height to 600 pixels as well. For the hero section, let's set that to auto and the minimum height to 800 pixels. And also we need to change the H1s to a static size font. We'll go with 70 pixels and then 70 times 1.2, which gives us 84 pixels for the line height. For the work text here, let's change that down to 70. And then we need to edit the grid of this section and change that from 144 to 70. And then we need to drop the size of these H3s down. So with the H3, let's go down to, let's say 30. And we got quite a bit of white space in between these different projects. So let's go ahead and edit the grid here and shrink that down to 200 instead of 300. Just to remove a little bit of that. And then our H3s need to drop down to 30 with a 36 line height. In this next section, we'll drop the oversize heading down to 140. And these need to be the same size as our paragraph text, which is now 14. And we can edit our grid as well. We're going to extend this middle column to 0.75 and the one on the left to 0.5. Our H3 of our footer needs to be adjusted as well to 30 pixels in size and 30 pixels in line height. And then our call to action is going to be the same as our H1, which is 70 pixels with an 84 line height. And we'll edit our grid again. So we're gonna drag this to 0.75 and 0.5. So 
Let's also adjust the work text there sticking. And for that, what we need to do is reduce the padding down to an appropriate size, 144. Looks like it lines up well. And that looks pretty good. So now we're going to continue on down. Now we're into the landscape phone. I'm going to shrink this to the smallest we can get it right before it goes to the portrait phone and see what's breaking. So the first thing I'm going to do is decrease the H1s. So we'll set it to 46 and this time we'll actually add some line height. So 46 times 1.2. So we'll set that to 55. For the grid down here at the bottom, let's add a row to this and then delete one of the columns. And so now they are going to be stacked. And the height needs to be set to auto now. Let me grab the hero section. For the position on this, let's set it to justify to the top and we'll adjust the padding to 100 and 20 to get that in more of a vertical layout. That looks good. The H2 now, let's drop that down to 36 with a 54 line height. Then we'll make the H3s 24. So we'll do that for both of those. The work text needs to go down to the size of our H1s, which is now 46. We'll scale that one down. And again, we need to adjust the grid to match that. And then finally, we need to adjust the padding there just to get that into a good position. Looks like 94 will work there. And let's also reduce the space in between these rows to 140. Update our H3. Twenty four and thirty six, thirty six being the line height. And it's here where we can delete one of these columns. So that looks like a much better layout. And these can stay the same. The oversized text. Let's just drop it down slightly so we don't have any further issues later. Let's go with one ten. And then 110 on the line height. I'm also going to push this left column over to 0.25 just to give this paragraph a little bit more room because this one doesn't need it. Update our H3 and then our H1. Then we'll scale down a little bit more. So when you're scaling down in the designer and you're not looking at the live preview, you'll see these little dots down here on this line. It's going to show you the different devices that are at that breakpoint. The 320, um, that one's on the iPod Touch, iPhone 5S, and the iPhone SE. So I'm going to try to get everything looking good at that size, because that's probably the smallest size screen anyone will ever view it on. We've got a few things breaking, but everything looks decent everywhere else. So let's go ahead and adjust here. So I'm going to grab a section. So I'm just editing the section here and I'm gonna adjust the padding on this one more time down to 10, giving us more room to work. And it's at this point where it's your call what you wanna do here, but I'm actually gonna take this work text and I'm going to hide it. So I'm gonna go up to display and none. And then for the work container, I'm then going to delete that column. Hit done there. And then the project container, can be dragged full width for each one of these. So all four columns, and this looks much better. Our navigation, we actually have the padding still at 40. We probably need to change that on the tablet, which we do. So let's go up to there and change that. I forgot about that one. So we'll change that to 20 on both sides of the tablet, and then we'll adjust it to 10 on both sides on the portrait of the phone. 
And then once more, I'm going to drop our H1s down. So we're going to go 38. And then for the line height, 38 times 1.2. Down to the next section, since we scaled down the H1, we might need to adjust the hierarchy just a little bit. So we'll tweak that and go down to 30 for the H2s. And then the H3s will take it down to maybe a 22. And at this point, I think I'm going to take the site of the day H3 and I'm actually going to drop it down to 14 because it actually does not need to be the same size anymore. It's not going to look as good on a phone. So we're going to take that down to a body sized font and then we'll continue setting the rest of the H3s to 22. So for the footer, I'm actually going to add some more height to this section on the phone. I want it to go up to, let's actually go on the phone landscape and we'll set the height of the section to 400 pixels. And then we'll adjust the grid to a 100% height. And so that just looks a little bit better. And for our stat grid, let's also drop the height on this section down to 400. And the footer's a little big. Let's actually drop that down to 280. One more thing I'll do actually is I'll lower the space here to 100 in between the projects. And before we export this and go and host this with Hostinger, I want to go publish and I want to use this domain name that Webflow gives us. It's a webflow.io link. And I'm going to publish to the selected domain. And this is going to allow us to preview what this is going to look like when it's actually hosted on our website with Hostinger. So we can go to this link with this little icon. And this is what our site currently looks like. So now that we have that, we have our project settings all ready to go. We can go ahead and select this icon to export code. It's going to take a second to load and you can scroll through and you can look at the code if you'd like but I'm going to go ahead and click prepare the zip. And then now I can download that. So I'll just go ahead and download that. And then we can close this out. Now we can go to Hostinger. So you can use my link down in the description, hostinger.com slash Kaler, and that'll take you to this page. Let's go ahead and take a look at the web hosting packages because that's what we're going to be doing here. So we can scroll down. They have three packages, single shared hosting, premium shared hosting, and business shared hosting. $299 a month is the current deal for the premium shared hosting. This is the plan that I have that was provided to me by Hostinger. And this is their most popular plan because you can host up to 100 websites. It's got 100 gigabyte of SSD storage. You get 100 emails and you also get a free domain, which I'm even using for this video. So it's a really great deal for that reason. You don't get that with the single shared hosting. And also with the single shared hosting, as insinuated by the single name, you can only host up to one website. And if you need to go up a step, you can always go to the business shared hosting plan where you have an extra 100 gigabyte of SSD. So you got 200 total, and then you can get up to approximately 100,000 visitors monthly. And there's also some other features to business as well. So once you've selected a plan, that'll take you to this page. I showed this in the last video. You want to make sure that you create your account. And of course, make sure you use coupon code Kaler for an extra 7% off that stacks with the current deals. So if you're getting the single shared plan, for example, you can get up to 91% off. So once you've got your package and you've created your account, we'll go ahead and log in. So once you log in, this will take you to Hostinger's H panel. All right, so first let's go to the hosting tab and I need to set up my hosting and start now. I'm just going to click skip. I'll start from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and claim the free domain. Of course, you may not have this option. It depends which plan you chose. Once you set up your domain, you can go ahead and view that or you can go to the control panel, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go manage the site. And from there, you can just scroll down and go to the file manager. And inside of the public HTML, you have the default PHP. We can just go ahead and delete that. And so from there, we can select the upload icon and I'm just going to choose file. 
And first I'm gonna upload the index.html. And you'll notice I also had three folders. You can either create those folders and upload the files, or you can even upload the folder. So I'll just do that. So I'll just grab each one of those and then upload the entire folder. From there, we've uploaded everything that Webflow gave us. And if we now go to our domain name, we can take a look at our live published website. And so with that, we have now finished our series designing this personal portfolio website with Adobe XD, building it with Webflow, and hosting it with Hostinger. Special thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring this entire video series and making it all possible. Make sure you check them out with the link in the description, hostinger.com slash Kaler. And one final time, don't forget to use that coupon code Kaler for an extra 7% off and start hosting your websites today with Hostinger. So if you enjoyed this series, check out these videos here for more web design related content. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.